Thank you, Corinne. Uh, I'll just do a quick introduction and then pass it over to Jared for a moment. My name is Jackson Marvel. I'm the director of financial aid at the Hotchkiss School, and this is my tenth year uh, at Hotchkiss. And Jared, I am uh, the associate director of admission and financial aid at Choate, and have had the pleasure of also working at Hackney School and St. Mark's up in Massachusetts. Thanks, Jared. So, as we start off. What we want to do is, is hopefully educate you on how we went about building our own school uh, estimators for our school's website. And, and the learning objective today is, is, is one is how to create your own estimator if you so choose, understanding the pros and cons of, of making an estimator for your website, and then also realizing that this is not something that you have to shop out of house and, and go find a, an organization to do for you, that you might have many of the resources available to build uh, this with, within your own school. As we think of the pros and cons, and I'll have Jared wait on this as well, is, is why build an est estimator? For many, SSS is sort of a mystery to families. Uh, they don't really understand the methodology, the process, how it works. If they get uh, a copy of their estimated parental contribution or family contribution, sometimes that number is very puzzling to them. Uh, users who can use the estimator can get a better sense of their financial aid award and what that will look like. Uh, I think both for Jared and for myself, we wanted to build um, a, a, an, a tool that would not be exact. Many of you might know college and universities have calculators, which are maybe two and three pages long of data that they will collect before they give you an award. We wanted to provide something that's in the ballpark but not an exact amount. What we're hoping is, is that more families will find this educational opportunity affordable to them and, and something that's not out of their price range and will encourage them to continue with uh, the application process and not discourage them. And one would hope that by using it, you might have some conversations via email or phone before March 10th uh, that might take place uh, during that one month period of notification and when decisions have to be made so that parents can plan ahead a little bit. Uh, in terms of, uh, of the cost of our, relative, of our respective institutions. Uh, Jared, do you want to wait on the cons? Sure. Uh, I, I mean, I think this uh, just pretty neatly outlines it. Um, I mean, definitely on the con side is that it could discourage people, right? It's most of our schools uh, have a tuition that is a little bit more than most families enter the process thinking that they're comfortable paying. Uh, I, th I think most of us have a pretty fair process, and by the time we get to the end, uh, families realize that um, you know there's absolutely a value that uh, is associated with this, but uh, certainly the, the sticker price can uh, scare people away. So uh, the estimator is not returning that it's free tuition for, for most people. So um, you know, fewer families could apply, definitely uh, as a result of them getting. Uh, an actual number, something that's more concrete. Um, you might actually also get more families who apply for financial aid. On the flip side of that, more families might say, hey, I can make this work. Um, and I, I think both Jackson and I see that uh, in some degree as a net benefit. Um, you know, trying to make this experience more accessible and more affordable to families is a good thing, um, but you might have a greater volume of families who are applying. So uh, depending on your workload, that could be a con. Um, and um, some families could end up uh, going through this process feeling uh, a little bit of resentment about the number that they get from this. Uh, and, and I know both of us will touch on that and what our experience has been as we go through this, but uh, certainly that conversation could come back to you in a very negative way if they feel like, gosh, you know, your estimator said one thing and your actual number was another. Okay. Great. So. Um, just an overview of how we calculate aid awards. Um, we derive our adjusted effective income value from SSS. Um, we enter the adjusted effective income in an Excel spreadsheet and subtract out the income protection allowance as established by SSS to determine the family's discretionary income. And then what we do is we use one of ten income bands to determine the parent contribution. And I share that with you just so you get a perspective of how we do business before we go into uh, this, at this, this project. Um, and really the reason this, this estimator project first came around for me a few years ago was talking with colleagues. Uh, I felt that many times on my website we had put income bands in for families of if you make between X and Y, 125 to 150, the average grant is a certain number. 
let's say $20,000. And I found that there's so many variables that go into that award that that number can be very misleading. And on many occasions on March 10th, I would get families that would kind of complain to me saying, well, on your, all of your publications, it says the average grant for someone who makes what I make is this. And then I would say, well, you know, your family size, your number of kids in tuition charge in schools, all of those variables come into play. And so obviously um, in, in determining how to build an estimator, that's the first thing that I had to figure out determine is, is variables. And, and we started with an income range. And at the time, I decided uh, with my colleague, Charlie Iannuzzi, of setting an income range from zero to $390,000 with increments of $10,000. And that's a little arbitrary. You could choose almost any income range, but that just at the moment felt right to us. The asset range, we did zero to $700,000 in increments of $50,000. Family size, obviously you can have one or two parents and children. We just maxed ours out from one to, to family of five and the same thing with tuition charging schools. So in many ways, this is sort of the Hotchkiss Estimator 1.0 version that we built. And, and towards the end of my slide deck, I'll share with you how we sort of built a more uh, a 2.0 version of this. Um, so when we first started building this, we, we definitely sort of hit our head against the wall a few different times because we sort of did this in an old-fashioned way. We, complete, we created a template in SSS, which didn't take into account COLA. We would input data to calculate the various adjusted effective incomes, so various income numbers, asset numbers, family size. And I quickly learned after we started building this that if we were to do it this method by entering data into SSS, making a, a you know a, a, a dummy account uh, family there and adding in those values, you need 5,600 possibilities to complete all of our variables that we've set aside, and, and that would just be hours and hours of work. And as my slide shows, uh, you know, just no, pay, you know, this would take you forever to do that. And so I think both my colleague and I realized that there was a smarter way to go about doing this and, and that we needed to think about how we should go about that. And that's where we came up with the idea that since this is an estimator, we don't need exact numbers, but we want to be able to capture the estimates of what those numbers should be. And so we spoke with a, a Hotchkiss math instructor named Matthias Weiss, and we said to him, we would love to be able to figure out what the adjusted effect of incomes uh, would be with these variables. And what he asked us to do is give him sample data points so that he then could determine a multivariate regression to estimate the other data points. And so we would sort of test and retest that, that theory. So we'd give him 20 or 30, 40 data points. He would send us back uh, a model to test. And we'd say, no, it's off by 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000. Um, and we went through this and through this and through this. And finally, his testing was reasonable to us. And what I mean by reasonable was within a couple hundred dollars of what it actually would have been on SSS. And that is why, we, and then we knew that we had sort of the model that we needed. Um, and if you want to know what a linear multivariate regression looks like, the picture uh, on the slide shows you that. And basically, by applying this linear regression, you kind of capture the curviness of the line and, and the data. It's not a straight line. It curves and fits the data that we have. And uh, not that you'll be tested on that or no one's going to expect you to be able to know that or pull that off by yourself. And I wouldn't have done it without our math uh, instructor, Matthias Weiss. But this was a, he, I said him visually, what, what does this look like? And that's what he shared with me. Um, so now I had my 5,600 estimated points, and my end goal was to get 5,600 parental contribution values. So the next question is, well, how do I go about doing that? And as we mentioned before, I have 10 income bands that I use. And so, uh, so my, 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 my uh, methodology is a little more complicated than some. And so what we did is we created conditional statements that linked adjusted effective income numbers and family size to the income protection allowance and discretionary bands. And a colleague of mine named Amanda Bonesack, who worked in our office, uh, basically helped build this spreadsheet for me. So based on all the family size and, and AEI numbers, automatically would autofill with the, I, the correct income protection allowance discretionary band. And then the end result was I had 5,600 uh, parental contribution values, which was great. The next step of what we did was is I spoke with someone in our communications office, and his name is Alan Murphy, and I explained to him our project and explained to him what we wanted to do. And he basically created an online database 
to store the collected data. And then using, again, technical term here, a PHP scripting language to communicate with that database so that way when a family puts in their information, it would make that instantaneous interaction that would pull up their results. And then he built the face of the estimator that collects the family data. So the exterior to our machine, our tool, he built as well. And again, went back and forth a little bit on that uh, to be able to determine what, what we wanted, uh, both for directions on there and the look and feel of it. And we wanted to be as user-friendly as possible. So if you look at it, this was sort of the 1.0 version of our site. People would put in their income. They put in their assets. They would put in number of parents, number of children, and number of members of the household in tuition charging schools. And then we have a button that would just, you hit, that would say estimate, bang, and then the number would come out. And what we did is not how much financial aid you would receive, we looked at it by how much a family would be expected to pay. And I would, I believe putting in something at the top to, to sort of have some uh, directions and make sure parents understand that this is not an exact number, but a guide that will hopefully give them a better sense of what it would uh, be, uh, what the cost would be to go to your school. Um, and so that's what our 1.0 version looks like. So what we did is we actually, I wanted to find out how many people actually went to this site and visited our site on a month-by-month -month basis. So I asked Alan Murphy again uh, to, to, to catalog that for us. And basically, if you take the August of 13 through um, uh, April of 2014, you can see in front of you how many visitors from unique IP addresses we had. And probably not shocking that between the months of September and January, we had a pretty sizable number of people, in my opinion, come and visit the site with uh, a smaller, quieter amount um, in sort of the, the August and then the post you know, deadline for when information needs to be in. To, uh, full disclosure, uh, the uh, last year uh, was our first full season sharing the, the tool. It actually came online January of 2012, just at the beginning, and we actually had pretty nice results from that. As I found out later from a colleague, it was interesting, they told me um, they sometimes refer uh, people to our estimator if parents are having questions about the financial aid they might receive in affordability. So for all I know, some of these numbers could be from people who have no intention of applying to Hotchkiss, but uh, have been referred to us uh, fr from a another school. Um, what I also wanted to do is I wanted to test well wh how close was what the estimator projected and what the actual family payment was for families that we admitted. And family A, as you notice, the estimator projection was 14000 the actual family payment was 12000 a difference of $2,000. And in my world of the estimator, that is, that's great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I, I don't have a problem with that. Family B, as you notice, the gap is bigger. It's a $7,100 gap. And the reason I look back on that was COLA. And that was something that, again, my estimator 1.0 version did not take into account. Uh, family C, again, another large gap of what the estimator projected and what they actually paid, and again, in the family's benefit. Um, was because they had a child in college. And depending on how your processes work, traditionally for ours, if a student is attending a four-year college, we usually assume that two-thirds of a family's um, resources uh, you know, can go towards college and one-third um, can go towards, of their, of their family contribution can go towards us. And so as a result, that's why the estimator projected uh, 41,000, but we had them paying 26. And, and, and family D, which doesn't always happen often, is that grandparents, you know, had written on the, you know, the parents had written on the PFS that grandparents were going to pay, uh, you know, a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars toward the child's education. And that's why that difference took place. But just something I wanted to capture to find out, well, is this really helping people the way we'd like it to? And again, in family A, it does it very well, but B and C, one could argue there is a gap and it's because the estimator just didn't have a, a means to, to, to cover those areas. Um, so this year what we did is uh, over the summer we revised our original estimator. So now it's, I would call it the estimator 2.0 version, is we increased our income range to 600,000 and left, left the asset range at 700,000. 600,000 is a high number. Uh, I think the reason we went down that road is 
because just in case in those rare, rare cases you have a very high income earner with several kids in college and tuition charging schools, would that family possibly qualify for aid? Again, those numbers are a little bit arbitrary. A, a school could come up with any combinations of numbers that they think is more appropriate for them. And as a boarding school that costs $52,430, uh, one could imagine that if you're paying three college tuitions that you may get a little bit of aid from Hotchkiss uh, if, if your fourth child is at Hotchkiss. Uh, we actually asked to specify what other tuition charging schools are, whether it's college or primary secondary. And again, that is sort of addressing one of the shortfalls of, of the first version of our estimator is that if a, another child is in college, that it doesn't take that into account properly. And so we built in a method that families can now do that. Um, we factored in COLA in select cities, so New York City, San Francisco, LA, DC, Boston, and Chicago are all now taken into account that if you live in one of those areas, uh, you can add that in to our new estimator. And then we added a comment feedback form on the estimator site. Families can complete the form and information sent into us and we can respond to that. The hopes that, you know, if, if they get instant information, they might want some instant feedback and they might have some questions or concerns. So far we've had a couple of hits on that. We have not had a lot of hits on that. But again, as the season starts to, to heat up, we might see more. And if many of you might know, uh, with SSS having that new email um, tool, you know, families can, can directly contact me that way as well. Um, and so that, that will be interesting to see how that goes. Um, I, I think that uh, the changes, I, I think I've, I've been happy with. It was a, lot, a little bit of work to do that, obviously adding in more values and, uh, and making that happen. And for ours, which I like about it is that it is unique to Hotchkiss. It does, um, it, is not a, it is not a formula and a methodology that is specific that can be used at any one school. It really does capture Hotchkiss's actual um, you know, methodology that would hopefully capture a pretty accurate but not perfect financial aid award. Jared? All right. Thanks, Jackson. Um, so our, our process is very similar to Jackson's. Uh, and actually, as we looked around for models on this, uh, Hotchkiss was the only one that we found who was doing something like this on the high school level and certainly would love to know if other people are, are doing something similar to this because uh, we'd like to collaborate on it. Um, but we actually uh, had a very similar process in terms of working with the math department. I worked with the chair of the math department and we started with regression analysis as well. Um, but we uh, very quickly decided we wanted something with a few fewer number of cells than 5,600. Um, and so for us, it was only going to work if we could come up with a formula that was more or less one size fits all. Uh, and, and we were comfortable being maybe a little further off on what that award would be. Um, and, and so that was our starting point. Um, but I would say there were really, there were three things uh, that, um, that that we we knew, or actually, well, getting ahead of myself, actually, let me back up and give everyone sort of an idea of how we do financial aid. Um, so I'll jump back into that. Um, so we more or less use Compasses to gather information. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the tool that all of our peers use. We want families to go through the process as seamlessly as possible. Uh, we ask for a lot of information. So um, we also use Compasses so that they only have to fill out the information once. Uh, and then obviously there are any number of things that we will add uh, our philosophy to in terms of home equity, unusual expenses, um, protecting assets, COLA, retirement assets, et cetera. So um, there are any number of things that uh, go into that that um, we realized in order for this calculator to be you know, sort of simple, we would not be able to take into account. Um, so really looking at what are the major drivers of, uh, of this calculator. Um, but really the third step of our process is then working with families, uh, regardless of how rigorous the process is, how many factors we've considered. Um, you know, you know your own financial situation. Obviously, uh, you know, there's, for as much information as you get, you will not know that family's financial situation as well as they do. Um, and so we really try to make it explicitly clear to families um, that that is, you know, that is our philosophy. And if we have not understood your situation, we want to make this as affordable as possible. So, you know, please take this as the start of a conversation, not the end of it. Um, so more or less, I would say that's, that's our process on financial aid. Uh, next slide. 
Um, so uh, where really where we got to this was you know this this meat grinder effect of you know it can't have too many variables. Uh, we need it to be as simple as possible. Uh, and, and probably everyone who does financial aid knows that you know there there are really only a handful of factors that um, that are the major drivers, and it's those little tweaks that make your school's philosophy. Uh, different or unique. Um, so we quickly honed in on income and assets, income protection, and other children in tuition charging schools uh, as the three major drivers to see, uh, again, we're, we're in a testing phase here to see if we were willing to take this small number of factors, could we make it work? Um, you know, would we be within range of an award? Uh, so next slide. Um, and with that, we, we knew that the three things we were looking for here were, uh, again, it had to be simple. Um, we wanted to provide even on the directions. The directions had to be brief uh, but clear. Uh, very few questions that we asked families to respond to, and it had to be easy to use. Um, it had to be accurate within range, uh, and for us that was within a couple thousand dollars, and it also had to be somewhat stylish. Uh, and, and so again, as we went looking for models, there were lots of models on the college front, um, not, uh, not, not many on the high school front, but on the college front, uh, as some of you may know, there's a requirement that they have uh, an estimator on their websites. Uh, there's actually, there was an article in the New York Times recently about Wellesley's uh, estimator because they were basically coming to this, uh, coming you know, to the same conclusion that uh, Jackson and I did, which is, you know, we want to try to make the process as approachable as possible, uh, and all the colleges had these models where it would be multiple pages and um, you know, 30, 40 questions, uh, and, and they're really trying to get a super accurate answer because they were required to have that out there. Um, so that wasn't what we wanted. That was overly complex. Uh, and then and, uh, through conversation with Jackson, you know, we had a very similar philosophy and uh, he was kind enough to, you know, let us pick his brain and uh, use some of the language he used, even uh, in terms of the, you know, the brief and clear directions. So I would say our our, our estimator looks fairly similar to, um, you know, maybe the 1.0 version of of what Hotchkiss had done because we reached a very similar place. Uh, next slide. Uh, so. I would say, you know, for, it really came down to one weekend uh, was, was what it took to put the, uh, the test model in place. So uh, the chair of the math computer science department and I sat down and um, I explained to him uh, with those three driving factors, the income, income protection, and children in tuition charging schools, uh, how it is that we more or less get to an award. Uh, and I taken a crack at some of the um, some of the mathematical models at first. He revised those, uh, and then he also had a little bit of coding skills and was able to mock up an HTML version that didn't look quite like this one looks right here. Uh, this is just a screenshot of it, um, but just a really basic text, um, you know, question and response uh, text-based thing that we were able to shop around to the senior administration at the school so that they could actually get a feel for what it is we were trying to do. Um, but you know, within a weekend, and we were able to more or less uh, bang this thing out. And then after that, we turned it over to um, a third party to give it the skin, if you will, uh, you know, to give it the, the rounded corners on you know, the graphic interface to, uh, to create the text boxes, to do the, um, you know, the kind of error verification in the boxes. So if someone puts you know, a dollar sign in, it doesn't send it haywire. Um, so that part all happened later, and that was done out of house. Um, but this is more or less what it looks like on our website. Uh, you hit the estimate button at the bottom, and it gives you a number. Uh, and people are free to play with it as much as they want. We don't collect any information on them other than what Google Analytics collects in terms of how many people are on the page, what the bounce rate is, that sort of thing. Um, but we, we don't collect any information to see, you know, John Smith came in and said he had 70,000 and then he revised it and said he had, you know, 300,000 in assets. Uh, you know, th there's no information gathering on that. We really want this to be a tool for families to use to feel comfortable. Um, again, this goes back to access and affordability for us. If we can make this opportunity more accessible, more affordable, 
then at the end of the day, um, this tool is, is a win for us. And I, I would put that same, um, that same offer out to anyone who is listening to the presentation who works in financial aid. If you would like a similar tool, uh, I would certainly be more than happy to talk with you uh, individually, specifically, to try to help you get something up and running because uh, you know, at the end of the day, I know that our school only has a certain number of spaces uh, for students to, um, to enroll at our school, uh, but the combination of our schools has many spaces, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's the same philosophy in terms of making this experience uh, accessible to uh, as many people out there as possible. So if this helps you know, make this accessible to the you know, the families who apply to CHOTE or don't apply to CHOTE, uh, that's, that's also a win for me personally. So that's my presentation. And uh, yeah, back to Jackson or to questions. I think questions, exactly. Hi, gentlemen. Thank you so much for that. Um, there's a lot of great information in this, um, in this program. And I think uh, a lot of us are... Um, intrigued at how it might help our schools. Um, I don't know if anyone, at this point we don't have any questions, um, but I will uh, give another minute and see if anyone um, writes them in. You were very thorough, so perhaps you've covered all of it. You've actually shown us um, actually how the back how the back of the house looks, which is nice. Um, we usually see the pretty front door, but it's nice to hear how this was built from um, through your math department and through your computer science department and helping with the program. So uh, I know a lot of people probably gathered a lot of information on that front. Tell me, do you, um, do you feel that since you've added this, I'll ask my own question that I've been wondering, um, uh, that that people are more comfortable applying for aid? Have you found your numbers um, increase, decrease, uh, any changes at all in, in um, how your financial aid application numbers have looked since you've added this? Well, this is Jared. Um, similar to, uh, to what Hotchkiss did, we actually rolled this out a little bit later in the cycle purposely uh, so that it wasn't just a confluence of events. So we rolled this out, I think it was in April of 2014. So we haven't actually gone through the full cycle yet. Uh, certainly, like I said, in terms of Google Analytics, we can see how many people are hitting this page uh, in particular. And it looks like it's definitely a value to people, but we haven't been through a full cycle yet. So this, this, is, uh, this is our big test drive this year. Excellent. And, and I would say, I mean, it's interesting. I wouldn't, if I notice the number of families applying, it hasn't shot up like 15 or 20 percent or anything like that. Uh, I think what I found um, is, is that it's a, you know, maybe it's a tool that you might not even know how much value it brings to a family, um, but it's, it's, it's maybe, you know, getting them to apply or having a better understanding of their award and the difference between uh, you know, what they might be thinking that they might des deserve in this award and what you're going to be providing to them. So I, I think for me, the, whether, if we get more people to apply for aid, that, that can be wonderful, but it's hopefully, it, it's attracting the families that just aren't sure that they could, you know, be in the game at all, that are encouraged to come and, and, and be a part of it. And, uh, and so I, I think I, to be honest, I think as most human beings are, I have a feeling December and January I'll get a lot more questions about it uh, as people start getting down to deadlines and, and people have to really start putting forward more effort into this. Um, but, but I haven't noticed anything in the, this, you know, after the, the full cycle we just had last year. Great. Um, let me see here. Let me, um, we do have a question from um, one of our audience members. Um, uh, Rachel actually asks, she has found that people in Idaho don't fully understand the term financial aid and they're considering using alternative te terminology, such as perhaps saying something like grant or partial scholarship. Uh, do you have any suggestions or thoughts on that topic? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's a great question. And I think the challenge I always find is depending on how you want your school, you know, I have people come to me all the time saying, oh, I hear that you give out scholarships. And the concern I have for that 
language is that we, we offer need-based financial aid. So I do get worried sometimes that, that families can, depending on what language you use, believe that you are giving out you know, a, an award to somebody who might not need it financially, but because you want to entice them to your school. Now, some schools offer merit scholarships, and so that, that is, is all well and good if, if you exist in that world. So I know people have discovered, talked about using different language to talk about uh, financial aid, uh, and I, I just would be, just be careful that you don't phrase it as such that people think that you are buying, you know, students, athletes, musicians, you know, whatever that area may be, and that you're offering, that these are all very, you know, wonderful students and applicants that you're offering need-based aid to. Yeah, and, and I would agree with yeah. that. I mean, the, the, the one thing that I would underscore is just the working relationship that not only Choate and Hotchkiss have, but as an association of schools, uh, we meet regularly, uh, what we call the 10 schools admission organization. Uh, and it's, you know, I, I would say it, it's so critical uh, to be able to, you know, sit down a couple times a year, you know, eye to eye, you know, understand what it is that, you know, one another is doing, bounce ideas off each other about standards of best practices, uh, and obviously uh, things will, you know, markets are different, you know, from, you know, you know, even Connecticut to, you know, Massachusetts, New Hampshire to New Jersey, um, but certainly, you know, when we're talking about then Idaho, you know, different part of the country, uh, you know, people might have very different philosophies on how they use financial aid, but uh, I, would, I would encourage you to sit down with peer schools if that's where, you know, part of the confusion comes from so that there is a similar approach. I agree. I think that, you know, perhaps um, even simple change of, of terminology to say tuition assistance um, versus financial aid. I mean, that, and if you put that information on your tuition and fees page with an explanation next to it about what the actual tuition assistance uh, program is like, that may help um, people understand well, what, what the school is offering, um, because I do agree that it can be a slippery slope to use the word scholarship. People do feel as if it's um, uh, something that is, is buying students. So I know that um, all admission officers have had that, that conversation in their offices. Corinne, I think also a quick, quick follow-up just hit me is that I think some schools can do a good job of this is when you attend, when you host open houses or events that you talk about it and make it a very public, you know, acknowledge the fact that we ask our tuition is, is high and if you're going to be a, you know, a student at our school, Jared and I, it's going to be for maximum of four years, but you know, for some schools that might be um, on the webinar, it could be for 10 or 12 or more years. I think being very public and open about it right up front, acknowledging that this is a, a big investment and that you want to partner with them and you partner with them through offering tuition assistance as you used a nice term and that if they have questions to reach out to you, um, you know, as, as one colleague said to me, the two things that we're working with here are people's children and money and they hold those two things very sacredly and so if you can engage them in a conversation uh, about, the, about the money piece, you might be able to hear their story and alleviate their fears. And if you don't, I think sometimes aid has been sort of talked about on, in the back room and it's not, it's not out in the forefront and something that a, a portion, a decent portion uh, of many of our communities are receiving uh, to be able to attend our schools. I agree completely. Thank you so much, Jackson, and thank you, Jared, for providing this wonderful webinar and interesting topic today. And thank you to the audience for tuning in. I just want to remind everyone that uh, this presentation will be made available on the webinar page in the professional development section of the admission.org website. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day. Thanks for having us. Thank you.